Hello and welcome to this YouTube video. In this video, we would talk about structured query language, which is SQL. But most importantly, we'll teach you how to download dBeaver, which is one of the um, uh, free and open source um, softwares that um, we use to run structured um, queried languages, that is SQL. Uh, before I kind of go into um, some of the other agenda we have for today, I think first off, I just want to show you some of the about statements and the overview of dbeaver. I think one thing I like about this um, tool is that it is free and anybody around the world um, can use it as you look at trying to learn SQL, right? How can you extract data? How can you clean data and all of those different things from relational databases, right? So as you can see there, dbeaver is a free and open source um, uh, software that, you know, developers, business analysts, data analyst, a whole lot of um, uh, other technical folks. In fact, a data engineer, a data scientist, and, and even a database administrator can make use of this um, this tool as well. And you could see some of the um, functionalities of, of the tool all written down um, here. And then some of the things you could do, you could create an entity relational diagram for you. That's what an ERD means. It could do a data transfer, it can compare, it can export or import. It could give you some mock data generation, right? So many of these different um, uh, nice cool features that dbeaver can help you um, do. I think another thing which I love about it is that it has a very good um, uh, user interface, right? Um, which, which is something that I really love. And then down here, you can see some of the supported databases for dbeaver. Right, different types of um, uh, uh, databases depending on which one you're familiar with. All right, but for this video, we're specifically going to focus on SQLite. Right, that's basically what we're going to focus on um, for this video and show you how not only to install dbeaver but how to bring up SQLite when you um, during the installation process for for dbeaver. Okay, so. I would put all of this link in our YouTube description below. So um, you can just go to the link, click on it. It will take you to the about statement. It would also bring you to the download page here or better still, you could come up to this, um, the website link that you have over there. And then um, all you need to do is go to download, right? If you're, if you're a Windows user, you could just click on the Windows installer, right? And you download it to your um, to your computer. I'm using a MacBook, so I cannot click on the Windows um, installer, obviously, right? But if you're using a Windows, just click on the Windows installer, follow all of the different prompts and have it installed on your Windows um, computer. And then if you're using a MacBook, which is what I'm using, right? Um, <clears throat> It now depends what kind of MacBook you're using. Are you using the one with the Intel processor or the Apple Silicon, which I believe is the M1 um, chip. So I'm using the M1 chip, right, which is the Apple Silicon. So you just want to click on that one and then download it to your computer. I've already downloaded it, right? So once you download it and you open it up, you're, you're, it's going to look like this. Right, you're gonna see something like this on your on your MacBook, and also uh, this is the other stuff you would see on your on your Mac. Right, all you need to do is just drag it and drop it in there. Uh, and then just allow it to do its thing, right? And that's it. And once it's it's done, um, transferring into your uh, applications folder. I could just come up here and this is my dbeaver. Click on it. All right. And then it opens up um, it opens up here uh, for us. I, I was already uh, I already had it installed previously and was doing a different project, but I'm gonna walk you guys through everything. So 
Let me just kind of close this. All right. So this is basically what you see when you open um, yours, right? It tells you, hey, you want to start a new connection or you want to um, do a recent SQL script or, you know, so some key assist or some find um, action. So let me first go ahead and just close this one because I'm not using it anymore. All right. Now, what I want you to do is go over to the driver manager. So click on database, go over to the driver manager, click on it, then click on SQLite. Or if, if SQLite is not up top here, you could just search for SQLite and then click on edit. Then we go over to just make sure that you have you know, you have your class names, you have a URL template, like everything on yours looks exactly the same like this. And then go over to the libraries, right? Then um, I want you to click on download slash update, just to make sure that you're using the um, up-to-date SQLite uh, uh, library or package. Okay, so you can see, it shows you um, download the driver files and all of those different things. And then once that has been loaded, this is basically what you would see there, right? You should be seeing these two things there, right? The new um, driver files for SQLite. Then all you need to do is click on download. And then that's it, right? Your stuff is all um, downloaded and you should be ready to go. Then click on OK. And then close this. So if you did not get that, you can pause the video and then um, rewind it back, right? And basically look at how I did all of that again. But for the benefit of that, I will show you one more time. So click on databases, go to driver manager. If you don't have SQLite as the very top one, you could search for SQLite here, just say SQLite, right? And it's gonna pop out. You click on it, click on edit, then make sure yours looks the same way, like the class name, the URL template, and the embedded and no authentication is selected as well as the um, description and all of this stuff, right? Then go to libraries. You could see um, if yours doesn't have this three different stuff there, then we need to update the, the SQLite driver. Click on download slash update, right? Then a new um, folder would, oh, sorry, a new um, box would pop up, right? And then, so I'm just gonna click on it again. It's gonna show you the, the download um, there, right? So do this, and then you can click on download, right? So now you could see it's download, right? And then once all of that download is finished, it's gonna close that um, box. Then you can click okay, right? Then close, close this as well. So that's basically how um, you can install the SQLite driver. Now, the next thing we wanna do is to create um, a database connection, right? So come over to file. Yeah, we could do open file. Oh no, sorry. Uh, come back to database, right? Click on new database connection because what we wanna do now is to, we wanna import, um, a database into our dbver so the database that has all of our um, data or tables and everything so that we could use um, sql on it so in this case um, the language we'll be using as i said it before is sqlite but just remember just like how i showed you in the about right you could see all of those different um, supported databases right so you could see them here, there's SQLite, there's Postgre, um, SQL, there's Oracle, there's MySQL, um, there's just like, you know, there's Octana, there's a lot, there's, there's also Azure, you know, the Google BigQuery, um, uh, uh, a lot, a lot of databases, right? So if you wanted to learn more than one, right, maybe you wanted to learn SQLite, you wanted to learn Postgre, Oracle, MySQL, depending on whatever company you're working for, this is a good um, uh, uh, 
tool to use in terms of dbver. So all I do is click on SQLite or you can just set for it up here. So for me, I've just clicked on SQLite and then you click next. Then it brings you here, right? So this is where you can now upload your um your .db file, which is your database file. So I'm going to be using the popular Chinook database file, right? I would also include um, a link in the YouTube description of where you can download this file so that um, you could download it and then follow along with, with, with the practice that we're doing here. But let me just show you. So the Chinook database, very popular sample database that almost, you know, any first time user to structure query language um, basically uses. And this is what we call the entity relationship diagram for the Chinook database, right? So it has a total of 11 tables with different um, uh, features or columns in those tables, right? So you could see all of the different tables here, you know, the employee, um, the customers, the invoice, the artists, the albums, the media types, the genre, the tracks, the playlists, and so on, right? And you could see the relationship between those different um, tables. For example, tracks has a relationship with media types or genre. It also has with album. It also has with invoice. It has with playlist, right? So these are the different um, tables and their relationships um, among uh, among each other, right? So let's open this. Uh, so um, okay, so turn it right there, right there. <laughs> So all you want to do next is just click on finish. And then you have your Chinook database. Um, upload it there. So, uh, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I think I made a mistake. I shouldn't have. Yeah, we can just instead of going to file, we can just click on it and just go to open SQL script. Yep, so it will open an exact SQL script related to that database. So here we could use um, just a little bit of practice. We could use a select statement. And the asterisk helps us to call all of the different um, columns that we have in a particular table. So take, for example, if we wanted to call a table, the track table, these are all the columns we have there, right? Like nine different columns, right? So the asterisk helps us to call all of those um, uh, columns if we don't want to call a, a particular column. So, and then the from helps us to call that, that particular table. So from tracks. Okay, so. Now all we do is you can just click the, the play button here and it runs it, right? It will run everything um, for you. So let me go with this, okay, good. So below it, so here is what this, this, um, this cell here is what I like to call the input cell. So let me put this in, oh yeah. So this is better for you to see. So I like to call this the input um, cell because that's where you, you put all your coding um, uh, uh, stuff in, right? And then below it is basically like the output. So anything you input here, you get the output below here. So remember, let's go back. So if you look at under the, the track um, uh, table, we have track ID, name, album ID, media type, and so on. So you could see all of that here. The track ID, the names, the names of the songs, Right, the album ID, the media type, the genre, the composer, the how like the, the length of the song, you know, the 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 
should I say the storage size or the byte size or whatever, and then the price of the song, right? So just a very simple um, SQL select statement, right? Select all the all the columns, all the features from from tracks, right? If we wanted to select only um, the let's just say we wanted to select the just two two columns, the, or let's say three columns, the name of the song, the composer, and the unit price, right? So all I would do is instead of saying an asterisk, I would say name composer unit price, right? That's it there. And if I do no. okay, now I just find something else. So if we run this, if we execute the SQL query. So now you can see instead of having like nine different columns, we just have three specific columns. The name of the song, the composer, and the unit price, because that's basically all we want to see, right? So I will, this is just you trying to understand how to use um, dBeaver, right? A homework to you that I would give you is try to use, try to do a simple select statement, right? On, <clears throat> on what's it called? on the employee table, right? For the employee table, I needed to come up with the first name, the last name, um, the, the, the title of the employee, right? Like the position title, and also the dates they were hired. So I'm gonna put it here as a comment for you. That's your, um, that's your simple tax. All right, so that's the simple tax that you have to um, work on. Just to get familiar, just to familiarize yourself with the, with the dBeaver and make sure that your um, your software, which you have installed either on your MacBook or your Windows is running properly. If you have any questions, please put it on the chat and please um, like this video um, so that more people would be able to see it and also um, watch it. Thank you and see you next time.